Today we are going to look at Rockgen RG300C by Rocktech Electronics Limited, released in 1991 and is a video mixing Genlock device for the Amiga computers. This specific device is one of many Genlock devices released for Amiga computers between the 80s and 90s. So before we talk about the RG300C, let's talk about what is a Genlock. Genlock is short for Generator Locking. A Genlock device takes two video sources and synchronizes the video signals. Maintaining synchronization is very important when switching between the two video signals. A Genlock monitors the two separate video signals. For example, if the camera is on frame seven, but the Amiga is on frame four, well, the Genlock adjusts the timing of these two signals, which are generated and then locked, hence the word Genlock. If the signals were not synchronized, this would result in vertical and horizontal disturbance. A Genlock device synchronizes the signals and allows the two signals to be processed and displayed together without any issue. Now let's take a look at the device. The RG300C matches nicely with the Amiga 500. It's constructed well with metal all the way around the device. The RG300C was considered as a mid-tier Genlock device and offered more features compared to low-tier Genlock devices. It was sold in 1991 for a retail price of £114.99 or £119 depending on where you bought the device. Let's take a look at the features that the RG300C provides. At the top of the device we can see the front panel. The RG300C has three modes which can be controlled by the red button which switches between the three modes. Overlay, Fade and Amiga. And we have a Dissolve dial. We'll go into more detail about what these modes do in a few moments. Let's take a look at the back panel of the RG300C. First we have the switch, which allows the user to switch between internal or external power. The RG300C takes its internal power from the Amiga computer. However, it can be powered by a 12 volt power supply externally. One of the features of the RG300C is the ability to allow the signals to pass through the device even if the Amiga is powered down. Next to it we have the composite video import which allows you to hook up a receiver such as a camera with a live or recorded image or back in the day a VCR. The signals from the video import and Amiga go through the Genlock and then outputted via the video output. The video output is again your composite port and is your video source which goes directly into a device which you want to record the feed such as another recorder, VCR or laser disc player. And finally we have the 23 pin D sub connector which goes directly into the RCB video port on the Amiga. So with the RG300C already plugged into the Amiga 500, let's get the device we'll be plugging into the video input. I'll be using this vintage Sony Handicap model CCD F500E, released in the late 1980s and is perfect for this demonstration. It also has a composite output, so let's plug one end of the cable into the video out and the other end into the video in on the Gen Lock. And for the video out, I'll be using this key capture device going directly into my computer. So let's now power on the Amiga and go through some of the software and features using the RG300C. When powering the Amiga, the RG300C automatically goes into Amiga mode. Amiga mode does not display any video source from the video in. Only the Amiga encoded signal is active. The dissolve knob is also not functional in this mode. 
So the RG300C came with a demonstrational floppy disk bundled with software. These included a script program to write text which appears on the video out display and two self-running vertical and horizontal color bar demonstrational programs. However, I wouldn't recommend these programs when using the Rock Gen. The Rock Gen really shines when using programs such as Deluxe Paint. By switching over to Overlay on the Rock Gen, we can bring back the black background by increasing it with the Dissolve dial. Switch into fade mode and turn in the dissolve knob fades in or out the graphics on the screen. However, using the dissolve knob doesn't provide the most fluid of motion with the gen lock as there seems to be a break towards the end of the transition. Now the feed doesn't have to be live, it can be recorded. So for example, I, I recorded some footage earlier and I want to basically put that feed into my gen lock and then add the titles in uh, as it's been basically being played via the camera, I could do that because what's gonna happen is I can have this being played, put into the gen lock, add the titles in and add my VCR back in the day, record it on the fly. So that's just one of many ways you are able to basically edit your video uh, back in the day. It's been amazing to step back into the past and use the RG300C, one of many Genlock devices commonly used by the Amiga community during the late 80s and 90s. I hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, bye for now.